Alexander, let me start with you. <laughs> um, it would seem to me, having listened to Hans, that the entire future of the marketing <laughs> paradigm these days is built entirely around data. Is that correct? Hello. Good morning, everybody. Um, I like to think of the digital, uh, um, the web, as a market. And markets are conversations. We, we all know that. It's about people. So basically, when you have conversations, you have to understand the conversation. You have to be in the conversation. And digital conversations are actually done by clicks. And clicks are data. Everything that is around digital is about data. So I would say yes, 100%. If we miss the data piece, the understanding of what data means in digital, we're missing the whole story. Good morning, everyone. We're in the business of understanding our markets. We're in the business of understanding what society is about, how they communicate, and we're in the business of leveraging that to economic uh, good and for the good of our consumers. But we seem to have got on a, on a bent that says it's, it's all about digital. That's the only thing that matters. If you, if you ask, ask United Airlines, okay, who, who, I mean, you're sure you've all seen the, the, them hauling their passenger off and beating him up as they throw him off the plane. Has nothing to do with digital, has everything to do with how you treat your customers, has everything to do with philosophy. And, and we seem to have flopped over to it's all about data. The CIO in, at Gibbs reports into, the, into, into myself as head of marketing, and that has got rid of all this us and them and all those issues, but you also understand their realm. So suddenly Poppy is a big issue to me. I'd like to be able to you know, uh, communicate freely with all my clients, but, but, well, but there's constraints and I understand them now because it falls under my page. But that's my question. Do you understand them? What is your unique relationship with them? I think you've got to have a, you've got to have a CIO professional. You've got to have someone who understands the tech. There's no doubt that's about that. That's a given. But, but you need a direction which is uh, consumer-orientated. CIOs are actually the guys that have to deal with the discipline around technology. How do you manage the infrastructure? How do you manage data? How do you manage, make sure that it doesn't fail? The CMO, on the other hand, is the guy that's actually pushing at the cutting edge, trying to create new value streams for the, for the business. I think that we actually have to make sure that the entire organization is along for the journey, but essentially it starts at the top. That conversation has to start with the directorate being involved in where this organization is going. If they don't buy into it, and they don't put the money forward, nothing happens. It's the world that has changed, not marketing that's changed. I think that also we, we've become exceptionally good at collecting data. Mm. So if you look at uh, uh, what's happening now in the digital space, everybody is talking about big data. The big problem that we have with that is that we're collecting data faster than we can make sense of it. Yes. And that's a big problem. So there's no substitute for common sense, especially in the United uh, Airlines uh, example. But the thing is that organizations need to start developing a culture around where we're collecting this data, what are we going to do with this, and how don't we hurt our customers? Collecting data is one piece, as we say. We're, we're getting good, not exceptionally good, in col at collecting data, I think. It, this is my opinion, anyway. Uh, but then you have to extract data, and then you have to process data, and get to the understanding of what that data means, and then turn that data insight into impact. Exactly. This is a process. And that process impacts every piece of the organization, any, any, every part of the organization. It's about how we are open to yes. build a measurement organization. And, and I come back to my question, how, how have you done that? You take a small thing and make that small thing, thing work. So give me an example. Um, say, you, you can measure everything, so you have to start somewhere. Uh, say. We're talking about marketing here. Okay, how you acquire new customers? Okay, uh, acquiring new customer multi-channel means that you you start eventually on Google and then you follow this user through different channels. Uh, maybe also online. So you have to measure and follow this customer. This is a, a real life behavior. You don't see this person, but you have to follow. Yeah. So the thing is that we have organizations that are using your data, your private information to come after you, and they want you to pay for it. <clears throat> okay? That's the big problem that we now have. Now, that actually then starts to actually uh, infringe on things like uh, data privacy, a violation of your constitutional rights, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the thing is that we have all of this information, we're collecting more of it every day, and we still can't seem to make sense of it, and they can, uh, still can't tailor a message to you to tell you that you actually need this policy as opposed to sending out blanketed messages to everybody, okay? So that becomes a bit of a problem. 
So when are they going to start treating you like a customer and not just a number? And the intelligence is not there yet. And we've got to actually discover that. So for the CMO, you've got a big problem. So you've actually got all of this data. You know that you need to make money out of it, and you need to generate new revenue streams for the organization. On the other side, you've got the directorate saying that, well, it's only a matter of time before we get sued. How do we actually mitigate against that? A big problem, and it's going to be coming along. Because there are two important pieces of legislation that have just been passed, one coming along soon. The, other, the first is Poppy. The other is the cybercrime uh, bill that's coming along shortly. At some point in time, if you actually use this information in the wrong way, you could actually be seen as a cyber threat to the people or the organizations that you're targeting. So these are the types of things that organizations need to start figuring out. The fundamental issue is we have personalization, which is data-driven and is a very powerful and tool, but is a blunt instrument if you're not adding value. As marketers, I mean, I was trained classically that if you're going to advertise, you were interrupting someone's reading or their viewing, and in return for their time, you had to add value. I think we've lost that concept. We've, we've decided because we can, we have the right to. So how then do you start to develop and build a strategy where you're not going to piss the customer off and you actually see that you are not uh, engulfing people with information but are adding the real value that our audience member here has pointed out? A good starting point is to actually take what you just said now and put it into a document that communicates to the company. Don't tick the customer off as we do this, and how can we create new value streams with everybody as a team? Listen, this is a conversation. And the best conversation is actually not the people that talk, 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 and you're there. It's people that can listen and understand what the conversation is all about and what interests me. So for, for instance, if you're uh, the CMO, you've got to actually work with the C-suite, and you've got to actually decide now, how are we actually going to take this into the marketplace, do things, if they don't work, do a lot of other things, and then we fail iteratively as we go along and we eventually get to the right answers. But you've actually got to take these small steps and you've got to evolve uh, your strategy as you go. So the thing is that you have to try and figure out how to actually make the time to fail as well before you get it right. Otherwise, you're not going to. If you're too afraid to actually take the risk, if you're too afraid to build risk into the way Marlon, you strategize... Marlon, you're talking about startup organizations here. Yeah, a lot of the people in this room work for big organizations uh, that you know, don't have time to fail. Are you suggesting that uh, we're just so far behind the digital curve here yeah, that uh, we, we can't catch up? The thing is, Jeremy, if you Small don't make the step. time to fail, yeah. then somebody is actually going to come along and then disrupt your business, and soon you'll be out of business. Once you realize that the CIO and the CMO both work for the same person, and that's not the chief executive, that's the customer, the client, okay, then this, this artificial divide just falls away because, um, as we've indicated with, with social media and the fact that there's a feedback channel, you, you get a smack so quickly if you get it wrong that you can't afford to be fighting each other in a, in a boardroom walk. Best it's about client experience because, although, as I was saying to you earlier, we don't do a lot of online in the classical online sense, almost 80% of our interactions with our students as such happens online or digitally in some form. So, so a large portion of the user experience is digital. So the, the primary driver of our discussions is about user experience. The CIO is the guy that's responsible for the invisible part of the organization. But if it fails, it becomes very visible and it hurts brands sometimes. The CMO is the guy that's actually responsible for pushing the brand forward, and he's the visible part of the business. So sometimes you'd actually see them as, at opposing ends, but You've got to figure out how to get them to work together. So you need a sensible guy that actually reports above them and sets strategy for them and guides them on where the organization needs to go. So there's a lot of sensibility mixed in with creativity and discipline.